Diverse voices. Unique sound. Not the same old thing. Different, different. This is NOCO FM. We all want our primary relationship to feel like it did when we first met. Full of excitement, connection, and a chemical cocktail of emotions. Most of us, however, have experienced the loss of this utopia the longer we were together. In this episode, my conversation with stem cell biologist and national best-selling author, Dr. Bruce Lipton, continues. As Bruce explains what happens and how we can regain this honeymoon effect in our relationships and can create heaven on earth as long as we are living. Huge breakthroughs and how to create what you want in your life await. So welcome to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James. You have to hear this because everyone else and every from especially the pharmaceutical industry says, oh, no, no, you're a victim. You're a victim. And if I buy victim, that means I buy, I am powerless. And then I must buy the drug because if I'm powerless, that's the drug that's going to heal me. And I go, okay, let's just put this back into the placebo effect. Uh, I told you the drug was going to heal you. You took it. You got well. And then it was a sugar pill. Then finally, for the first time, you recognize, oh, my God, it was what I believed that happened. Uh, uh, And this is the part because um, we have the program. Uh, 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 The story, The Matrix, as I said, it's not it's not science fiction. It's a documentary. Uh, And then I say, okay, so 95 percent of our life is coming from the program. I go, yes, it is. And if the program is negative, like most all of it is. Uh, you can't get out of the hole. You can't get out of the hole, okay? Uh, But then there's an opportunity of, well, what if I stop playing the program? Well, in the movie, that's you took the red pill. And then I'm going to go, hello out there, all of you dear friends listening. Guess what? I bet you took the red pill at some point, but you didn't know. And now I'm going to remind you of what was happening. Every day, your life's blah, 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 blah. And then you meet the special person, And all of a sudden, that feeling of love, oh, my Jesus, love is coming in here. 24 hours later, you're experiencing heaven on earth. Oh, my God, the love is so beautiful. The food's great. The music's great. The crappy job is not so crappy anymore. I love my life. I'm having a great, I'm creating heaven on earth. I go, wow, 24 hours, you went from blah, blah, blah your whole life. And 24 hours later, you have heaven on earth. We now know scientifically that is what happens when you take the red pill because falling in love is the red pill. Meaning what? As I said, we only control our life 5% of the time with consciousness because it spends the rest of the time thinking. Then I come back and say, yeah, but guess what? The day you fell in love, you stopped thinking. Why? Well, what you want is in front of your face. Why, why would you spend time thinking when you could be here now and enjoy it? So it becomes one of the first times people become what we call mindful. They stop thinking. But if they stop thinking, then their hands are on the wheel while they're the, you know, the creative uh, conscious wishes and desires. So I say, so what happens when you stop playing the program? I manifested wishes and desires. I go, well, that was always there. Except on a day-to-day basis, only 5% of the time are you going there, so you're not going to really see it a lot. Only when you stop playing the program. And then, unfortunately, the honeymoon has a life period because of some reason. Well, how long can I stay mindful? Because life is busy. (laughs) I got a job. I got chores. I got responsibilities. I got to think. And as soon as I start thinking, the program kicks in. I go, ooh, is that the program with all the negative behavior in it? I go, yeah, that's that one. And guess what? Now the story of Bill. You've been in this relationship with this person, both of you in creative conscious mind, creating heaven on earth. And all of a sudden, I revert back to subconscious program because I'm thinking about fixing the car. And my beautiful partner comes in and asks me a loving question. And I'm thinking about the car and I turn around and go, blah, blah, blah. She looks at me and goes, who are you? Uh Uh-oh beginning of the end of the honeymoon. Why? Because like Bill, she says, who are you? Like I did something wrong. I'm now confused. Why? I wouldn't have done those things. Yeah, you wouldn't have with your conscious mind, but with your subconscious program playing your parent, you just did that. But you didn't see it, but your partner saw it. 
And that leads to an argument. And an argument after an argument, the honeymoon disappears, then life is back to, hey, guess what? Most of my behavior sucks now because I'm back to programming, 95. Well, and so, you know, I, I think it's interesting, too. I, I call it the chemical cocktail. When the chemical cocktail of love wears off and our brains seem to have assimilated our partner um, and uh, automated our partner into that, you know, old programs, then how do we do it, Bruce? How do we experience or re-experience this heaven on earth in a more sustaining way like you talk about in the honeymoon effect? Well, first of all, there's a simple statement that's been around for millennia, and it's called knowledge is power. If you have knowledge, then you can do something. If you don't have knowledge, I'm a victim. I have no idea what the hell is going on. Okay, now, if I'm in a relationship and I understood I got in that relationship because I wasn't playing a program and I was being me, the one that I want to be, and I do the bill thing there and I come out with a blah, blah, blah. If both people in that relationship understand the difference between programming in the subconscious and creativity of the conscious, if both of them recognize that, and the, and the one that's receiving the blah, blah, blah is looking, and instead of being shocked and offended, can stop for a second and go, oh, that, you didn't really mean to say that. You know, that, that sounds like a program you got from your parents or something like that, which then stops. It's not an argument. It's now a discussion. And now all of a sudden it says, well, do you want this behavior? And I go, no, I don't want that behavior. So what do I need? Well, one of the ways of changing is every time I bring that behavior up, instead of getting into an argument, my partner says, oh, you're playing that behavior again. That's repetition. And repetition becomes habit. So if I keep stopping the behavior after a period of time, the system learns don't even start the behavior because the moment you start it, you're going to stop it. So we forget about it. Boom, I reprogrammed. And all of a sudden, there's no argument in the relationship because it's just expressing something that the other person didn't see themselves. And then knowledge becomes powerful because if I know I'm doing this program and I knowingly don't want this program, then I can get engaged with rewriting the program. And now I empower myself. And so... Uh, that's the complete opposite of destructive arguments that were result of two people don't understand where the hell did that come from? It's like, oh, now I know where it comes from. Now I can do something about it. And guess what? When you change the subconscious, this is a, is there a wonderful result? Oh my God, there's a wonderful result. If you systematically reprogram those self-sabotaging things that you couldn't see, but other people helped you see. And you, it's not a, if somebody tells you you got a problem, most of the time was you get angry because they, they criticize me and don't criticize me and you get angry. I go, no, no, that's wrong. If it wasn't done as criticism, but was acknowledging, this behavior really wasn't that good. Did you see it? Okay. And I go, so why is this relevant? Because if I systematically go through and every one of those programs that are negative, I become conscious of, and I have an opportunity to rewrite them and put in a program that I prefer versus the one that I got downloaded with. And I put in what? Wishes and desires, uh, aspirations as my program. Here comes the joy. Once they're in, you have no more work to do. Why? They play automatically anyway, 95% of the day. So you don't even have to think about it. Your behavior will automatically be the most loving, wonderful, happy, harmonious experience and you don't have to work anymore. The only work was putting in the program. And once that's done, life is automatic after that. And you got the right program, then heaven on earth is not a short character. Heaven on earth is for as long as you live on this planet. Well, and I, I love, I'm like, my, my cheeks are hurting from smiling so much because this is so wonderful. And I love this so much. And I've experienced this in my own life too, Bruce, the positive effects of doing this. And I, I want to be able to give folks too, though, what are some concrete steps that they can take towards awareness first being the key and then the awareness of what do I do? How do I do this reprogramming? Well, this is where the problem has stemmed from over history, because over history, we've confused that there are two minds, conscious and subconscious, and put them in together, the mind. I go, no, no. 
They're two interdependent parts. Not only do they have different functions, conscious being creative, subconscious being habitual, but they learn in different ways. And that's where the problem comes from, because the conscious creative mind can learn in any way. Uh, people watching this program right now could be downloading, oh, my God, new ideas, conscious mind, great new ideas. Like, oh, yeah, that's really great. And so conscious mind, I could read the self-help book. I can go to the lecture. I can just go, aha, I got a new idea. And conscious mind will own it because it's creative. Subconscious mind is completely different. It's habit. I say, well, why is it relevant? Well, habits by definition are something you don't want to change every day. If I got a good habit, what the heck do I have to relearn it every day? I go, no. I say, I'll give you an example because so many people think, well, the subconscious world, the evil comes from. I go, hey, a CD recorder. Is it evil? I go, no, it's a machine. It just records a program. I say, oh, is the program evil? I say, oh, well, that the program could be evil, but the machine is not evil. The subconscious is not evil. It's just a machine that plays programs. Give you the benefit was, hey, you learned to walk before you were two and you're still walking without you having to relearn. Thank God I have a subconscious mind. OK, but the other hand, if I learned how to screw up a relationship when I was two, I still have that in there as well. That's a negative program. So now the ideas that you bring up is most critical. If it's a habit mind to resist programming, then how do you reprogram it? I go, there are three ways to reprogram subconscious mind. Two of them natural. The third is new. Okay. 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 How did I get the programs in in the first seven years? The answer was, my mind was below consciousness and vibration. It was at theta. Alpha, consciousness is a higher vibe. Theta is below consciousness. Theta, imagination with children, but also record. So if you can get in a theta, you can download new information straight into the subconscious. Not conscious. Conscious okay. not working. Subconscious is recording. So I say, okay, so that's called hypnosis. And I say, yeah, but the most important aspect is self-hypnosis, meaning hypnotize myself I go yeah you know how you do it every night when you're going to bed the moment your conscious mind shuts off alpha vibration stops your consciousness is gone you're asleep zone somewhere yeah but as alpha stops the next uh, mode of vibration as it slows down is theta so the moment you disconnect and the moment you fall asleep Subconscious is still operating, it's still recording. So if I put the earphones on as I go to bed and have a program of what I want to be in my life, love, health, happiness, wealth, whatever, okay, I don't care. And I, <coughs> excuse me, put the earphones on. The moment I fall asleep, alpha gone, I'm in theta. Whatever program is coming through those earphones consciously, I am unaware of it. Why? Because conscious is not even working. But subconscious is recording. So every night you just put the earphones on, play the program that you want to be true in your life that's not true, and repeat this. You know, just repeat this. And someday you won't have to put the earphones on because you have automatically, through habituation, repetition, have programmed a new behavior in there. So the first way of putting programs in, first seven years, Theta, subconscious, self-hypnosis. But after age seven, you learn new programs, how to ride a bike, drive the car, do whatever you're doing. I go, how'd you learn that? Repetition, habituation, practice. I could say consciously, I desire to play the clarinet. And then you give me a clarinet. It's like, yeah, I, I don't know squat about Carol clarinet. <laughs> I say, well, how do you learn how to play a clarinet? You know, I say, oh, you practice every day. You practice and you practice. And guess what? There's a point where you don't have to look at the notes on the page anymore. You don't have to look where your fingers are on all that. It's now automatic. Why? You habituated it through repetition. Ah, post age seven, you repeat through repetition a practice. And the more you repeat it, the more it becomes habituated. OK, a uh, little note here on the side. Sticky notes are not reprogramming. Sticky notes are suggestions. I put it on the refrigerator and every now and then I walk by and go, oh, yeah, there's a sticky note with a message. Great. That's not a habit. A habit is repetition. I, I, I enjoy it because uh, the new agey people have come up with a phrase that I think is so much fun that I use it. It's like fake it till you make it, meaning 
I'm not a happy person. So what am I going to do? Well, then every day, as many times during the day as I can, I have to say to myself, I am happy. I am happy in the middle of crap. You still, I am happy. I am happy. I say, what's the consequence? I say, repetition of saying the same thing over and over and over again, which is different than the sticky note because it's a practice, mm-hmm. uh, will inevitably just reprogram because it's called habit. And again, one day you'll wake up and you'll never say, I am happy because you already started happy when you woke up because that was the program and it's in. Okay. So, first two natural ways self hypnosis. Repetition. Then I say, okay, we are in a lot of trouble on this planet. Human behavior has precipitated what is called the sixth mass extinction of life. We are facing uh, the loss of human civilization at this moment. And it's not a thousand years from now. It's not a hundred years from now. It's in the next few decades because of human behavior. So it's interesting. Necessity is the mother of invention. We have a necessity to change our behaviors as soon as we possibly can and start learning to live in harmony with each other and nature. And I say, well, how how can we accelerate that? And the answer is as an invention, a new field of psychology has come in called energy psychology. And it, these, these are psychological practices that engage what I would call super learning. And super learning means you can just download, boom, boom. And so it doesn't take weeks to do this. You can, you can do it in an hour. You can do it in minutes. You can put a new program in. Uh, and on my website, just to help people very quickly, brucelipton.com. That's simple, brucelipton.com. On the website, under resources, I have, under belief modification, about 30 different versions of energy psychology. Whichever one appeals to you, it's got a website, you can read it. Whatever one appeals to you, try it. Because this is a way of bypassing the time that self-hypnosis and habituation normally require. You can do changes in, in, as I said, minutes in many cases. So three different ways. And I said, well, what do you want to change? I said, we go back very simply. I said, just look at your life. Whatever's not working, put in the program that you want that that says what you're working. Uh, uh, One last caveat. Oh, there's many caveats, but the last big one here is when you put in a program, it always has to be present tense as if it already occurs. In other words, Let's think I'm going to put a program and, I, and I've got a sickness and I say, I want to be healthy. I say, okay, let's record that. And now we come back in a year and I say, let's hear that recording. And the recording says, I want to be healthy. It's like, hell, I can't get to being healthy. I've got a program of want. <laughs> I'm it's wanting. always out here. It's always out there. So you have to say, and it's kind of psychologically disturbing in some sense because you're sick as a dog and you're going, I am healthy. I am healthy. And it's like. Yeah, right. No, no. The system needs to know why. Because if the program is I am healthy, and let's go back to that very important underlying phrase, the function of the mind is to make coherence between the belief and the reality. I'm a sick person, but now I have a program that says I am healthy. What's the function of the mind? It's to make me healthy so it conforms to the program. So that's how we create the health. But you have to put it in in present tense like you already have it. It can't be a future because there's no end to a future. It just keeps going that way but i'm telling you your job i don't have to tell you your job you know your job (laughs) you and i have some similar jobs bruce (laughs) (laughs) and and i love this and and like i said i mean i've seen it work in my life amazingly and and change so many things in in my life and i continue as i listen to your books and and uh learn a lot about how we can do this, discover even more subtle changes that need to be made. And I think that's an important point because people also, I hear all the time, they say, well, when do I arrive? When do I get to be done, you know, doing this? I just, I want the the finish line and there's no finish line. No. uh, And the beautiful part about programming is the concept of reprogramming. Meaning I put a program in and then it said, oh, that's not what I really wanted. You know, that there's, there's an old statement. Be careful of what you ask for because you're going to get it. Uh, uh, my partner, Margaret, said, said that that's a pretty negative thing. Be conscious of what you're asking for. OK. And I say, why? Because when when you're putting this in, uh, you may not see the ramifications of the program that you want to change. 
How does that affect? Oh, I want to change me personally. Oh, yeah, but now that might change your relationship with your family or your business or these other things because you didn't fully think it out. OK, then I say, so, oh, my God, I put the wrong program in. I go, oh, OK, then put another program in. <laughs> you could put a program in as many times as you like <laughs> until we tune it. And as you tune it, your life begins to accelerate faster and faster toward the destination that you seek. And this is so it's not like, oh, I just had one chance and I screwed it up. It's like, no, you can change it today, tomorrow. You can change it again if you want. What if you could change your life and help change the world at the same time? Hi, I'm Stephanie James, host of The Spark on NOCO FM. Join me and some of the most important people in psychology, spirituality, and science for a very special event. The Spark Summit, October 26, 2019 at the Drake Center in Fort Collins, Colorado. Together, we'll learn how to heal ourselves using the latest breakthroughs and self-improvement with interactive keynotes from luminaries such as Jacob Lieberman, Misa Hopkins, Larry Dossey, and many more. Ignite your own spark of hope to illuminate a journey towards living your best life. Join me at the Spark Summit, October 26, 2019, at the Drake Center in Fort Collins, Colorado. Tickets and more information at thesparksummit2019.com. That's thesparksummit2019.com. That's the power of it. Does it work? Well, from a guy who came from a most dysfunctional family unit, uh, I have the opportunity of having written the Honeymoon Effect book. Why? Because now I'm 20 years into a honeymoon. It's not, oh, it was just a nice little period when we got together. It's like 20 years of waking up every day going, God, how lucky I am. Everything's so wonderful. And it wasn't that way for 40 plus years in my life. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. I, I had to change it. Well, and I think that's one of the significant things at the end of that audio book, the Honeymoon Effect audio book, you and Margaret are on there together and you can just hear it in you. I mean, you can hear this love and connection and you're sharing stories about your relationship and your nicknames for each other. <laughs> but it, 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 It's so unbelievable to me from my 40 year age limit now i'm 75 and the reality is oh my god i've had uh, you know about 30 plus years of moving out of a very restrictive programming and disempowering programming to moving into a world today that is like god i wake up with i have no idea what's going to happen but i don't wake up with oh my god what's going to happen i wake up with wow what's going to happen and and it's so different because the negative things that always were present in my life upon reprogramming don't exist. It doesn't mean everything I do works perfectly. No. But I also learned this. When it doesn't work, it's probably because I didn't see that I was asking for the wrong thing. And the universe was sort of saying, no, that's not what you really want. And then in the old days, I go, yeah, but that's what I want. And I would beat on that universe, get it. And then end up going, no, that's not what I want anyway. <laughs> so I learned to, li- learned to listen to the universe. When it doesn't work, it's not because I can't have it. It's because there's another way to get it. And I was inappropriately uh, trying in the wrong way. And I, I think that's important, too, because I think we have this empowerment skill that you're talking about. And there's also this piece of surrender. Yes. Right. Yeah. I think that's such an important piece that people don't talk about because you just are touching on it. It's this thing of, I'm going to have my will, my will, you know, I'm going to just force this through. And then we're getting these negative consequences in our lives. And so 
Yeah, will you speak to that? We yeah, did it. Yeah. And we did it. So the idea was, oh, I guess I misprogrammed that. Well, then comes the beautiful part. Well, then reprogram it in a different way. Why? You can change the program anytime you want to change the program if it's not working. Uh, and through, you know, working with people where you can have a dialogue, because I said it's the same story of Bill. Uh, Bill cannot see he's playing his dad's behavior. And if somebody didn't report it back to him, how would Bill even know he's played the damn behavior? So the idea is that you need some way to reflect back your life, but then you have to do it with someone you trust and love. Because if you don't, then the, and someone says, well, well, you're this way, and then you get mad at them because, hey, what do you mean accusing me? And then there's a fight and everything. But when you're in love and there's an agreement that it's not one person attacking the other person, it's an agreement to say, is this open for discussion? Because maybe you didn't see your behavior was contributing to something you weren't even looking for. There's no argument. Now there's an opportunity to have, you know, a change in this. And, you know, what's real interesting about this is I'm not a religious person and I wasn't raised in that tradition in any sense. But, you know, what's interesting is the presumed last words of Jesus on the cross, because it applies to us on our everyday life. And the last words were... Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I go, geez, that's the whole story of all of us. Because someone pisses you off, you get angry, and they didn't even know they did it because it was an automatic behavior. It's not who they really are. But if I hold on to that and, and beat them up over what they just said, then everybody loses. And if you forgive them because... Did they really intentionally mean to upset you, disturb you, hurt you? Not in their conscious mind. But their subconscious program, it's not them. They got it from somebody else. And, and if we blame them and they're unaware that they're even playing the program, no resolution. No, just uh, more more problems because then one pushes on the other and the other. And then, you know, and sort of like I learned a very important one important lesson. This is so cool. There, what is the number of infinity? And you say, okay, this is the number. And I say, okay, plus one. And all of a sudden you realize, well, okay. Then you say plus one. And I say plus one. And it's like, well, this goes on for infinity. And I say, what's the last word? Ah, negative infinity. You say this, I come back and say that. You say that, I come back and say that. And blah, 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 blah. blah. We never resolved it. So the first thing is this. There is no last word. When you want to stop it, you have to be responsible and say, OK, I'm not going to give the last word. I'm going to accept whatever that person said. They called me an idiot. You know what I'm going to do? Yep, you're right. And I guess I'm an idiot. And I say, why is that stopping it? Because the person can't come back and say, I told you you're an idiot. And I said, yeah, we already agreed on that. And all of a sudden <laughs> it's like, how many times can they say that? And the answer is at some point the whole thing is gone. And, and all of a sudden I, I did what? So I let the person, I said that to them, what the hell do I care? <laughs> but by agreeing with them, there's no next last word because it's already done. <laughs> you can call me an idiot a thousand times. I already agreed with you the first time. The rest of 999 times, there's no problem with me. I'm already there. And, and, and so the idea is one of the most important things is the Jesus quote, forgive them. They know not what they do. And in the process of forgiving them, you also recognize this. If I perpetuate the problem by accusing them, I'm going to have to anticipate it's not done yet. It's coming back. So who's going to stop it? Do I wait for them to stop it? No, they don't even know what the hell they're doing. So I'm the one with consciousness. I'm going to stop it. I agree with you. I'm an idiot. I'm a jerk. I don't care what the hell you say. Why? You're going to go your way. And I'm going to go my way. And in that process, fine, goodbye. And you can tell everybody a minute, I don't really care. I have my life. And, and that was a big lesson for me because it ended those perpetual things that like, like parasites that hang on to us and, and feed off of us. And we're not we're unconsciously feeding the parasite. Well, and it's consciously, it's consciously, what do you really want? What is your goal? Is your goal connection and understanding or is your goal to be right? And if, if your goal is just to be right, 
there is no resolution. Oh, you know, that's interesting because that's exactly the behavior Margaret used when we first started coming together. And if we get into a little tiff over something and it started to not be nice, she would go into to, to the bathroom, look into the mirror and say exactly that. She said, do I want to be right or do I want to be in love? And all of a sudden, being in love was a little more important than being right. And then she could let go of that, whatever it was, and come back into the room. And guess what? Argument's gone. Fight's gone. No, love is more important. And that was a choice. Just as you just said, that was exactly the word she said. Do I want to be right or do I want to be in love? And so when we choose love, we can look at what the behaviors were and what the unconscious programming was. Instead of having to blame the other person and, again, try to be right, we can move to a place of love, which is resolution. And that's how a honeymoon could last forever, forever. Well, that's what I want, Bruce. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it took me I'm working on it. It took me 50 years just to even get into the consciousness of that, you know. Now, the beautiful part is if I had a really good teacher a long, 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 long time ago, I could have shortened this process so I could have had an extra 30 years of heaven on earth. Okay. So um, the whole idea is this, is whenever we decide that it's time for a different way, that we have the power to do that. And, and and again, Stephanie, the whole thing we've been talking about is where is the power? And if you go back through our education, almost the, always the power is not you. The power is something else, somebody else. This is that. And you're just a victim. And it's like, wow, that's a crappy way of living on this planet. Uh, and when you start, as you said, once you started to make a change, it was like, oh, my God, I changed it. Oh, my God, it's better. You know what happened the first time that happened to me is like. What's next? (laughs) As soon as I said, I changed that. What's next? And it was like this motivation to go out there because success causes you to go and say, let's be more successful. And we realize that we really are. We do have the power to make that change. And and one of the things before we wrap up, I know we're just about out of time, but I want to make sure that. Um, One of the things that you suggested, and and I use it with my clients too, I absolutely love it, is this scripting of your life, where you write everything, as you were saying, in positive, present tense languaging, and that that is such a powerful tool for manifesting all these amazing things. I have to agree with you because I heard that a lot when, when I was going through my transition from old medical world stuff into a new world. And people talked about that and I go, yeah, that's pretty nice. Not until I actually did it. Did Oh, my God. I remember that uh, uh, Margaret and I were looking for a house and we were just going out looking at a house here, looking at a house there. A year looking for houses, never found anything we want. Then we realized one day, what the heck are we looking for? And at that moment, we started to write down five pages of what was in the house, what the property was like, what the neighbors were like, how the real estate agent, all the details. And boom, the thing showed up and we had wishes on there that we couldn't afford. But I thought, hey, if I'm going to have what I like, then I'll throw it in on the list. And it came with a house. It's like, oh, my God, there's a writing studio. Oh, my God, there's a creek through the there's a guest cottage. (laughs) It's like. I couldn't afford that with my old thinking, but, and, and here's the part, because how you complete it is very important because of this. What you leave out, nature will fill in the blank, but not necessarily with what you want. <laughs> uh, uh, my last little story about that is I was going to go to a Pink Floyd concert, and I thought about it, and I said, well, I'd like some special clothes to go out to this big rock and roll night. And I thought, what would you like? And I thought, oh, I like one of those Russian shirts with a little collar and a buttons over on the side. And I thought, oh, those are really great. And I'm thinking, where the hell do you find a Russian shirt? I have no idea. <laughs> I had the vision. I go to this mall. It's got hundred stores in there. I walk into the first men's store. There's a sales rack in the doorway. I go to the sales rack. Holy crap. There's a Russian shirt on sale. Problem. I never said what color it would be. (laughs) You know what color it was? No color. Gray. Gray. Why? I said the shirt. I got the shirt. I didn't put a color into the shirt. And I got a shirt with no color. 
great. It was like, oh, my God. The more you complete this, and, and, and just to make it make, why does it really happen? And the answer is this. Quantum physics, consciousness is creating the world, not just inside, but outside. I say, how can we do that? And then I say, well, I can read your brain by putting wires on your head called electroencephalograph. And, and that's because the electrical activity of the brain is conducted to the skin. And now I could read your behavior. But there's a new one called magnetoencephalograph, MEG, not EEG. I go, what's unique? The probe doesn't even touch your head. And it's reading your brain function. you got to say, well, what the heck does that mean? It's like... My thoughts are not contained in my head. They're broadcast into the field. And this is where consciousness talks about the energy of the field accommodating your energy and your belief. And so thoughts are not contained in your head. They're broadcast in the field, positive or negative. Positive thoughts will return positive things to you. Negative thoughts will manifest all those things you don't want to see in your life, and they will manifest. So uh, biology, physics, we agree. Well, I am so glad that um, I was able to manifest this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I am so honored to be on your show because uh, not only are you a practitioner of the work that we talk about, but you have gathered an audience. And an audience is what we want to do, empower through knowledge. And the knowledge that we all really came with up until recently is limitation knowledge. And the new knowledge is is creative and uh, thank you for creating me being on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Because th this is what helps change the world. And this is what's going to help heal the planet as we bring these messages to our audience and we can share it with each other. So, Bruce, thank you with all my heart. I could just keep talking to you. I, I hope that maybe I can have you on the show again. We didn't even get to epigenetics. <laughs> I would love to come back because um, I so appreciate <clears throat> excuse me, the energy that you are broadcasting because it's an energy of change and it's positive and powerful. So thank you for being an evolutionary and helping us move beyond these very critical times into something we can thrive into. My conversations with Bruce are so amazing that it's just so hard for me to condense down some of the highlights. I feel like the entire conversation was a highlight. One of the big takeaways for me is the fact that we can reprogram our subconscious mind and create the life we truly desire. Through consistency and repetition, we can start to create new habits in our belief system. Bruce talked about self-hypnosis and ways we can reprogram our mind as we are in theta brainwave state, just as we are falling asleep or waking up. So by recording what you want to believe and playing it on repeat as you are in this state of brain state, you can actually reprogram your subconscious mind. So remember, when you're doing this, write your affirmations down the way that you want your life to be in as much detail as possible. There are so many audio recording apps that you can get for your phone so you can record these affirmations and then play them as you're falling asleep. As I shared last week, I started doing this now about two months ago, and I cannot believe the results in my own life. I continue to wake up already in a state of joy. I feel uplifted and confident throughout my day. And I also just noticed that I am truly enjoying life at a much deeper level than I did before. And like I said, I've always been an optimistic and happy person, but I feel like my life is now, I'm experiencing it at a depth of happiness and contentment and calm that I hadn't experienced before. Specifically in talking about relationships, one of the things that stood out to me was the quote that Bruce had from actually Jesus that said, forgive them for they know not what they do and relating that to relationships. The fact that we're in our subconscious mind 95% of the time means that only 5% of our behavior and our partners is coming out of consciousness. This is not an excuse for bad behavior or allowing your partner to treat you in, in whatever way that they would or say anything that they would. What it is, is maybe a level that we can get to of compassion and understanding for each other and a way that we can help call each other out in a way that's really safe by just saying, hey, 
Is this part of that unconscious part for you? And we can step away, as Bruce said, from always having to be right and getting locked in these power struggles of right or wrong and make that choice. Do we want to be right or do we want to be in love? Whatever we decide, I love this, how he said, whenever we decide that it's time for a different way, we have the power to do that. Quantum physics proves that we create our lives through our thoughts that we think, and you no longer have to be a victim in your life. You can rewrite it and begin to truly create the life of your dreams, and you can create the relationship of your dreams and create that heaven on earth starting today. Remember, The Spark is your show, too. If you have questions, feedback on the show, or if you're going through something and need a little help, we'd love to hear from you. Continue the conversation with us at our website, thesparkpod.com, and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. New episodes of The Spark air Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain. To make sure you don't miss an episode, subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts. The show is not a substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professional and should not be considered medical advice. If you're having a mental or physical health crisis, please seek treatment immediately. The Spark is produced by NOCO Media Limited, which is solely responsible for its content. Thanks again for listening. This has been The Spark, igniting your best life. I'm Stephanie James. This has been a production of NOCO FM.